Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to take a look at a very exclusive pair of shoes, uh, even as it relates to my collection. This is a pair or a set of shoes, a collection of shoes, that all have an entry price uh, for these particular shoes uh, in excess of $2,000. Now, um, like all of you, um, Mrs. Shoe Guy <laughs> sometimes uh, will ask exactly how much money I'm spending on this collection. And uh, these are the ones that uh, generally come under the most criticism, um, while uh, certainly the quantity of other shoes that I have um, uh, certainly comes into play as well. But what I wanna do today is I wanna talk a little bit about what separates these shoes from the others in my collection and just why they are quite um, as expensive as they are. Um, so just to kind of walk around the table here, uh, we'll start here. This is a uh, custom MTO shoe um, that I ordered through uh, Yohai Fakuda. Um, a really nice, interesting split toe in a pebble grain calf. This is a uh, beautiful three eye um, uh, split toe uh, from uh, Hiro uh, Yanamagachi, um, also in Japan. Um, just an absolutely gorgeous shoe, uh, also an MTO, uh, made out of an Anane um, hatch grain calf. Um, this is a custom reverse Adelaide uh, that I got from Acme Shoemaker. Um, and uh, this is in a beautiful uh, plum museum calf. Uh, just an absolutely gorgeous, very unique shoe as well. Uh, then we have this. This is uh, what I affectionately call my, my dragon hide Adelaide. Uh, this is a bison leather, um, and this is a Francis Wapplinger, um, uh, who is a uh, shoemaker out of Brooklyn, New York, um, who made these for me. Um, now, um, this last pair is part of the Orem line from Mecariello and is in uh, what he calls peccary leather. Um, and the peccary is uh, unique to any of the other peccary I've seen. It looks a lot like pigskin, uh, not like the peccary that I've seen from some of the bespoke makers. Um, and I know that he has a special treatment that he goes through during the tannage uh, in order to make his peccary stronger. Um, so it has a different uh, look and feel to it than the others. Now, um, if you look at all of these, they are... Um, there is a very, very high degree of handwork in them. Uh, the only one with um, hand-stitched soles is the uh, Fukuda, although he offered to do um, uh, to hand-stitch them for me. It was, a, it was an upcharge that I decided not to do just because I wanted to see what his shoes looked like um, if you get them off the, the regular type. Um, now, um, I asked <laughs> Hiro... Uh, about machine stitching versus hand stitching. And he just asked me, he's like, well, don't you want them hand stitched? And of course I said, yes. So um, that's kind of the direction that we went. But I had, um, I interacted um, with uh, with Mr. Fukuda um, via um, uh, Facebook Messenger. And I actually did a Zoom call with uh, Mr. Hiro Yanamagachi. So um, a different experience. I, I had a lot of communication with both of them, don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, the experience with uh, with Hero was was much more personal, um, and so I had um, a little bit more time there. Now, what's interesting is if you look at the shoe trees, there is a, a substantial difference as well. I have the three piece shoe tree here, um, and um, I have a, a, a double barrel spring um, from from Yohai. I have a hinge here from Hero, uh, a double barrel spring um, from Acme, and then another double barrel spring um, from from Mr. Wapplinger. Now, um, in terms of made to measure, um, this is uh, this pair here is um, all part of the made to measure. Um, so he really did um, cut this down quite a lot um, over um, over my standard size with him. Um, and each of the feet are different. Um, with Mr. Fukuda. Um, he actually gave me two different sizes, one for my left foot and one for my right foot, just in length, uh, or excuse me, in width, um, in order to accommodate uh, my, my feet differently. Um, uh, uh, Hiro 
actually did an addition on my right foot um, in order to accommodate uh, my pinky toe. Um, so he made that change there. Um, this uh, Acme is actually made to measure. They, um, we used uh, two other pairs of Acme that I had, kind of as fitting shoes, and they went in and they made some changes. And with Mr. Wapplinger, I went through um, two pairs of fitting shoes with him and came to the conclusion that, um, that w he came to the conclusion that it wasn't quite right and he wanted to make some adjustments. So he did that. He sent me another pair of fitting shoes um, in the traditional sense. The others were kind of like stock shoes that he sent me. Um, they were not um, stock um, like quality of his shoes. They were, they were basically stock shoes for the size and the last. And then he made some adjustments to it and then, um, you know, ultimately went in and, and this is now a made to measure pair. Um, I would say um, uh, adjusted um, versus, you know, this made to measure, which is more semi bespoke. Um, he spent a lot of time, you know, working on the anatomy and making sure that it was right. So $2,000 um, and that's kind of the entry point. Uh, 2,000 euros, $2,500, $2,800. I mean, there, there's a significant difference here, um, probably uh, ranging from the low uh, to the high. But it's, um, uh, although uh, these with the belt and, and, and everything was, was actually over three. So I guess these were the high. But, um, you know, the, there's a difference um, in the craftsmanship that you get in, in working with with these particular brands and these particular types of projects. Um, here, you know, we really went and we identified the leather. Um, I'm just gonna allow you to zoom in there. Um, this is an Adelaide, it has broguing on it and you can't see, he did such a great job of um, bringing it all together. Uh, the skiving that he did on the joints is, is super, super fine. Um, honestly, it's some of the best in my collection, it, it really is. Just, just absolutely wonderful. And, um, you know, and I compare that, um, you know, to these, which is still really, really well done. Um, and these are just um, ever so slightly more. Not much, <laughs> not much at all. Um, here, now these are, are, are quite a bit more. Um, they're just more profound. And, and part of that's just the design that, that each shoemaker has um, in the way that they do it as to how much of a difference. These don't look like they were skived much at all. It looks like it was, you know, creating that more three-dimensionality where here it's really creating that kind of elegant connection. So now you'll also see that uh, most of the high-end shoes, the heel caps go considerably over the heel, whereas in, in these they don't. Again, he has his own pattern and, and we create it that way. Now, um, he, he afforded me the option to do a lot of work with the pattern where, um, you know, with these, I didn't have any option at all in the pattern. And this pattern is pretty much my own making. Um, you know, we talked about it, we talked about what it would be like and they went and they, they built it for me. So again, there's um, significant differences there. So, you know, as, as you think about this, um, you know, the other piece, of course, that I think is really important to, to note, right? Um, I have no illusions that Hiro or Mr. Fukuda, um, uh, Hiro Yanamagachi or, or, or Yohai Fukuda, spent their personal time building these shoes. I'm pretty sure they each have a staff of, you know, five, six people. And while they were engaged and oversight um, in the traditional Japanese um, artelier way, um, I don't believe that they did these themselves. Um, with Acme, um, I don't know who the individual maker was on this. And with, um, with Francis Wapplinger, he, he is a shop of one um, and he videotaped himself doing most of the work. So I know that he built it, you know, from A to Z. Um, and with Macariello, um, Antonio is a wonderful guy. He does have a staff, um, but he was heavily engaged in the patterning um, and the, um, uh, making the sizing for this, uh, but I don't know that he uh, did the, the full shoe himself either. Um, I would be very surprised if he had, um, just because he's got a lot of shoes to make and not a lot of time. So, um, but that is something I'll have to ask him <laughs> the next time he and I chat. Um, so I have another pair of shoes from him, similar pattern that's coming um, in Shell Cordovan, uh, which I should get in the October timeframe. So, um, so th these are, um, you know, $2,000 shoes. They're very, uh, very well made. 
um, primarily by hand, um, in, in some cases by one individual, all with very, very fine leather. Um, and a lot of care is taken in the leather in terms of matching the patterns to the different pieces where you have different pieces, even here in, in combining uh, the museum calf. Um, this was, there was a lot of care taken in order to do this. And, um, you know, here you can see they didn't actually cut out the youth throat. It is a hole cut. They just joined the pieces together. And I think they did that here as well. Um, uh, but uh, you can't tell, well, you can kind of tell at the bottom of the seam there that this is actually the same piece of leather. So they, um, they really did um, just wonderful jobs uh, in, in pulling this off for me. Um, and all of them were ones that I had a, a very significant um, voice in the creation and construction of, uh, both from choosing the leather um, to choosing, um, obviously working my size, and then of course the sole work. And <laughs> you can't take sole work like this for granted. There's just a lot of detail that goes into this and a lot of choice that I made. And then um, as you look at the waists, nearly all of these have blind welts. Just absolutely gorgeous work um, that they do here. And um, this is the hardest um, work I've seen on a waist. Um, and, and they just all do it really, really well. Some are thinner, some are thicker. And, you know, even where they do it, you can tell, I mean, this was filed, you know, down by hand. And the work that was done here is just critically gorgeous. And, um, you know, and what's interesting is that for a very, very thick sole compared to a very thin sole, the shoes are about the same weight, which is amazing all in itself. Now, he actually did this uh, beautiful comment for me. Uh, we were talking about different designs that I had seen in medallions. And Mr. Yanamagachi actually did a comment for somebody once. And so I suggested that to um, to Mr. Wapplinger and he, he was able to uh, take that as inspiration for what he did. I've actually talked to both of them about it. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, and none of these have medallions, although um, as I continue to um, to go forward in my in my work on this, there, there are certainly some that I want to do. Um, just haven't gotten to them yet. So uh, anyway, um, just some ideas and some thoughts on these really wonderful shoes that I am absolutely uh, super, super lucky and fortunate to have um, and to have been able to acquire, um, you know, over the last uh, couple of years. And, um, you know, this is a, a rare group. Um, I probably will add, um, well, I, I've ordered one pair in this price or two pairs in this price range that are coming still. Um, but uh, that is a, a rare thing, um, including my first bespoke, fully bespoke pair um, from Catella. And, uh, and then as I said, the other, uh, other pair of Macariello. So uh, looking forward to your comments and what you think below. Are there questions that you have about this and as it compares? And is it interesting for you to see um, things in, in price ranges like this and, and, and discuss in terms of uh, construction and design and, and my experience, uh, because I'm, I'm interested in making sure that if that is a, a, of interest, that I it is something that I continue. So uh, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.